Okay, cool. We're here. We're live. We're recorded. All I'm right. With Nate Lichen. Hey, guys. Not Thanks like him. Lichen. So Nate and I were uh, introduced actually um, about a month ago from a, from a, a mutual uh, friend and client of ours. And um, he's he's based over here in Southern California. He's You're like, I think, five minute drive from, from where I am. Um, Very close. Neighbors. If you're listening and you live in the LA area, I'm in Mar Vista and you're in Culver City, right? Yeah, yeah. Technically like edge of Mar Vista, but yeah. very close. Yeah. What cross streets, just for reference, if anyone is listening to from, from LA, it's yeah, we're right. Our our current space is right at the intersection of Centinella and Washington Boulevard. And yeah. then we'll have kind of a flagship space opening up hopefully in the next few months, uh, right on Abbott Kenyon. Oh, in cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's gonna be really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so Nate, uh, if you guys are watching this, you can see that he is a 15 out of 10 on the good looking Richter scale. Um, so make sure you guys are wanting to watch this on YouTube. <laughs> oh no, I've been a blush, but Nate is, um, so he's, the really for, and, um, as you were saying, you guys, you guys have, have one clinic and you're opening another, uh, flagship on Abbott Kenny. Um, but you do, you, you started as a physician's assistant in the emergency room mm -hmm. and then you morphed into blue door, which is more of like alternative medicine. And, and you guys, um, really help with uh, health and wellness and kind of everything, um, in between. I know like you went to, to UNC, right? I did for yeah. undergrad. At UNC, yeah. yeah. And yeah. where did you go? So you went to, cause I, I know I went to school of medicine, Emory, is that the college you went to Emory? No, so I went to undergrad and did public health at UNC Chapel Hill, and yeah. then um, was out of the country for for a little while, a few years, and then ended up at Emory School of Medicine, and that's where where I did my medical training. Got it. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. So, so I have a lot of questions for you, and I was like, yeah. super excited. I, I'm by the way, I'm like super, um, I'm 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 like super grateful for you hopping on here, and I was very like, oh he's My not pleasure. gonna say yes because you're a big deal and yeah. um <laughs> you are you know and I was like I hope he says yes and um I know in your bio you you said you speak five languages I'm very curious this is the most important question I get all day what question what what languages do you speak <laughs> well I mean I will say I speak languages that I mean if you need poetry read to you I would be a great one to call. Sometimes they're not the most practical of languages. Um, but I, I, you know, in school, I got to say, like, it is a miracle that I found myself in medicine. Yeah. It goes against logic because all of the things that one should be good at to go into a career in medicine were so unnatural to me in school. Mm -hmm. I loved the humanities. I loved history. I loved English. I I'm probably the only person that applied to my program whose college bio is just like stacked full of like new wave French cinema and just like <laughs> stuff that was not at all useful for medicine. But um, I, I've i always loved languages. For some reason, my ear picks up patterns in language pretty easily. Mm -hmm. um, so I speak French, Spanish, Portuguese and Afrikaans for the one in three people in Los Angeles that speak Afrikaans. You know, there's a lot of South Africans here in, in Los Angeles that I'm I didn't sure. know that, no. Yeah, there's a ton. A lot of like, a lot of uh, a Jewish South African, big community yeah. in Los Angeles for whatever reason. Um, and they're all, they're all in the garment industry. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've met like six of them all in the garment industry. But um, <laughs> that's awesome. So you speak, you speak uh, five different languages. And back to like what I kind of want to ask in the beginning, you, you, you were in the emergency, um, you know, mm -hmm. you were in the ER, right, in Atlanta. Yeah. And then what caused you to create the Blue Door and people listening out there, like, what is, what is Blue Door? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I was in emergency medicine for, for a good chunk of, of my early career and it was wonderful. I, feels like being thrown into the furnace, like it's kind of sink or swim. And so for all of those years, I'm, I'm grateful for everything that I learned. I learned kind of the skill set of adaptability clinically and staying on your toes and it kept things fresh and exciting. 
but ultimately it was the decision to leave emergency medicine was yeah. a quality of life decision. Really? I was in Atlanta. I wanted to be on the West Coast. I, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, I just wanted to be near the water. I wanted to be able to surf easily. Yeah. I wanted that like SoCal quality of life. Um, so it was a quality of life decision. And it also kind of paired with a decision to as wonderful as the emergency medicine was, it paired with a decision to intentionally kind of take a step back from that for my body to relearn what it feels like to be asleep at like two in the morning rather than being awake for a shift. Right. And um, Blue Door was, was just kind of a serendipitous discovery. I uh, had moved down to Southern California and had met my friend and business partner, Monty, who had um, recently taken over ownership of an urgent care center. And he's not medical, he's a great businessman, but um, it, it just turned into kind of a, a, a great pairing of two people with, with different types of skill sets. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that we realized pretty quickly is that, you know, medicine in America is, I mean, it's like trying to, to steer an old ship. There's the way things are done. Yeah. Um, things are kind of like set in stone of this is what this type of medicine is. This is what this type of medicine is. Um, and there's not always been a lot of flexibility of answering the question of like what actually serves the patient the best, what improves access to patients. And is there flexibility and the ability for it to kind of evolve and change based on the way our world is changing and the way right. healthcare is changing. Yeah. Um, so we, we had this kind of old tanker ship of urgent care that had an occupational health element to it as well. But one of the things we quickly realized is that we both lived our lives um, in a way that was a bit different than the way urgent care medicine had been practiced. We right. both kind of unknowingly incorporated elements of integrative health and alternative health into our daily practice. And so one of the things that we've been really intentional about doing is taking this old ship and kind of redirecting it, kind of changing the focus of maintaining the accessibility of urgent care and the yeah. availability of urgent care. So mm -hmm. anyone can walk in off the street, maintaining that accessibility but expanding what that means so that it's not just simply a place that you come and get an antibiotic, but that we can distill the most effective parts of alternative health and integrative health and Eastern medicine right. into this like accessible framework of urgent care. So cool. You know, and like a lot of it, you know, Western medicine, if you look at it, it's like more on the okay, you have this, let's treat this. It's not on like, what caused that? Exactly. <laughs> right? And a, lot of, a lot of what you you deal with is like, okay, like let's look at the root cause and like kind of mm -hmm. figure out what's going on and try to figure Absolutely. out the best game plan for them. Um, yeah. Blue door has a meaning, like the word blue door. Someone's telling me, I think Ryan was telling me, what does it actually mean? Well, so I, I think the genesis of it was kind of more um, what that image elicits in a patient, this notion of kind of calmness and groundedness and centeredness and yeah. peace, kind of walking through and into a space. Um, and I think one of the things you'll see in our existing space and our soon to soon to open space in, in Venice is that this idea that uh, that healing extends so far beyond just the prescription, it extends so far beyond the actual medicine that it's influenced by the environment and by your ability to like lower a patient's anxiety with what a place looks like and feels like and smells like. And the right. entire experience is to kind of lower that fight or flight response, create a space where, where someone really is kind of receptive to, yeah. to wellness. And um, so I think Blue Door more than anything, the image itself is to elicit that sense of, of groundedness and safety. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I know, you know, that if you look at traditional medical, it's like, yeah, they put you in a better flight right away and everything's yeah. like not inviting and not welcoming. And you kind of have the opposite there, which is which is fantastic. We um, and I was asking this a little bit beforehand. Um, we work with uh, we work with men and women, predominantly women and uh, of those women and most of them are moms. Um, mm -hmm. Just in terms of overall 
you know, people yeah. looking to lose body fat, like what, what protocols have you seen the best success with? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm glad you asked that. That's, this is one of the areas that we're really excited about and that we're growing more and more and more in this area. Um, I will say one of the things that just anecdotally that I've seen with patients is very often you'll have a patient who comes in who's frustrated because they're doing everything right. They're eating right. Mm -hmm. They're exercising correctly. Um, and they're just, they feel like they just like hit a plateau and they can't move beyond that. Um, I will say I, I one of the, the prefaces that I give every patient is that no one thing is a silver bullet. Right. All of these things, whether it's peptide or supplementation um, or any of the alternative treatments that we offer at Blue Door is not a silver bullet, but it can be a very useful tool to uh, accentuate the work of everything else that right. you're doing. So like for an example, like, like, let's, like you said, like you have a female client who just feels like they just have this, little bit of extra weight that they can't, they can't lose. Sure. Um, something that we would do is have a conversation with them about whether or not one um, with their primary care physician or their endocrinologist, if their, their hormone levels are looking good, if there's anything that needs adjusting or addressing. And that would be the first step uh, would be working in conjunction with their primary care doctor or their endocrinologist to address right. that. But if everything's looking good, then they may be a really good candidate for supplementation with something like a peptide, which is peptide therapy is something that we're doing quite a bit of now. Yeah. And the whole idea of that is that these are naturally occurring substances or they're synthetics that mimic something that already a chemical that already occurs in our body. And that oftentimes kind of the answer to a lot of our health issues is something that our body already has the answer to. Yeah. It's just a matter of turning up the signal essentially yeah. on that with, with a supplementation or a peptide. So a good example of, uh, let's say this, this patient comes in, we could talk about things from uh, if they had a more significant amount of weight to lose and they were at higher risk for like a chronic condition, like they were pre-diabetic or had a high A1C level, we could talk about something like the peptide semi-glutide, um, which is getting a lot of press right now. Yeah. Uh, glucagon like one peptide. That would be one route. Another route that would be worth considering is talking about, there's a whole plethora of peptides that uh, are growth hormone releasing peptides mm -hmm. that basically can be used in men and women. And it's a natural way for your body to be signaled to increase the amount of growth hormone uh, that is both stimulated and released in the body. And there's a handful of options with this, but those are really good peptides to look at to increase lean body, body musculature. Um, it can help with the reduction of truncal fat. And then just kind of anecdotally, it has added benefit of improved uh, athletic recovery and improved yeah. sleep. And very often, as silly as this sounds, I think one of the one of the the key elements that I think is very, very, very overlooked in, in medicine very often is this notion of the importance of sleep and of recovery. Um, and so if if you're able to take something that is improving your sleep and improving your ability to recover physiologically, I suspect for a lot of patients that they're going to notice that just naturally some of that pesky weight is going to be less resistant to, to being lost. And so it's like the world of peptides is pretty new to me. I think like a lot yeah. of years ago, stumbled across it, obviously in the fitness world, it's like really blowing up now. Um, and uh, it's really interesting that you were saying a lot of the stuff that works the best, we already have orthomolecularly, like our body already, yeah. produces it. it's just really putting those into the best concentrations. Um, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, if that's kind of like what no, you I, I, I think that is, I think that's kind of a philosophy of medicine that I think is pretty beautiful and sustainable, that it's yeah. not simply, there is a time and there's a place for pharmaceuticals. I 100 100% believe that. That's the way I'm trained. Right. That's the way the brain thinks. 
I, there's absolutely a time and a place for pharmaceuticals, but there's something really beautiful and sustainable um, about this notion that very often those things that may be preventing us from not just being acutely sick, but prevent us from living our everyday life and right. wellness and optimizing wellness, oftentimes the answers to that are things that our body already knows. And we just have to kind of dig a little deeper yeah. and like, you know, optimize I, that term's so cheesy, but like essentially like optimize what we already have. I love, I love cheesy. I'm the cheesiest <laughs> person ever. I use optimize and everything. <laughs> I know it's like, it's kind of like a blanket statement almost, but uh, I think it's, you know, in terms of like, I guess for you, peptides are something that's new. How did you get involved with them? how did you come across them? And like, what kind of like, yeah, what kind of prompted you to start using them in your, in your practice? Yeah, I, I think that's one of the things that's really exciting. And I will say just on a personal level, one of the things that's been encouraging both on an emotional level and intellectually has been really encouraging for me is kind of the shifting of focus, I think, in a lot of American healthcare um, and kind of this increasing awareness, not just of peptides, but of integrative health in general. Yeah. What's been exciting about it is just, you know, you in a traditional Western practice, you practice for year after year after year. And as great as it is, at some point, you just kind of feel like, is there, is this the entirety of the world? Like, am I in a snow globe that only holds this amount totally. of liquid? And it's really exciting to see that in other parts of the country and other parts of the world, um, that there have been health practices and wellness practices that have existed for centuries and millennia yeah. that haven't really gotten a foothold in American healthcare. Right. And it's and it's really encouraging and exciting to me to see that um, we can reap the benefit of centuries and millennia of wellness practice from across the world. And that it's not that we can put it through kind of the 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 rubric of is there research behind it? Is it safe? Is it effective? And are patients actually benefiting from it? And what's exciting to me about that is it just expands our world. That it's not um, it's not a mindset of of less than. That it it really is an exciting expansion yeah. of what potential looks like yeah. in treating. Yeah, there's so much out there, and the fact that everyone you know other countries and, and places in the world have been using this for so long with you know, research based evidence that this stuff works um you know and it's obviously yeah we were we're very western medicine dominant it's like it's great that it's been integrated obviously we're in los angeles so it's like there's it's more prevalent here yeah um but you know for you i and this is kind of like a question for i think our, our everyone listening to this to understand what they can be doing better and like uh i guess to be more coachable in a sense mm -hmm. <laughs> what what type of clients do you see the best treatment with um in terms of like what they're doing you know with their with their treatment practice and involvement with you yeah that's a that's a really good question um i will say like for me the ideal the ideal kind of entry point into our practice and what that looks like beyond that entry point the ideal thing would be you know, again, we function essentially as an urgent care. So yeah. I would say the grand majority of patients come in a first time because there's something that's acutely wrong. They have strep throat, they have a cold, they have recurrent urinary tract infections, they have an anxiety attack, whatever, like whatever you would see um, that would bring someone through the door of an urgent care. I think, you know, the ideal trajectory would be that we can meet that patient's need in the immediate term that we can address that UTI, we can address that anxiety attack, that strep throat, that cold, whatever it is, that we can get them out the door feeling better. And whether that means they need an antibiotic or whether that means they need some sort of other pharmaceutical, but we get them feeling better and meeting that need there. But what I'd like to do is in that first encounter, even if it's a patient who's a cynic of integrative health, is create a low barrier of entry where a patient can experience 
something that expands their view and their their vision of health just a little bit. So let's 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 say, for example, like a recurrent UTI. Let's say I have a woman who comes in who I've seen, you know, four times for a UTI this year. She's in discomfort. I want her feeling better. I don't want this to progress to like a kidney infection. Let's get her feeling better with an antibiotic. But then the onus is on me as a provider to spend a little time talking with her and hearing what's going on and what may be contributing to it. And then part of that may be talking about introducing a probiotic that's specifically formulated for women to keep, uh, you know, the, the, the genitourinary right. pH nicely balanced um, and that the, the bacterial overgrowth doesn't occur. Mm. And talking about um, whether or not there's anything that we can do in terms of maintenance um, using plant medicine or using supplementation or something that is non-pharmaceutical that could prevent the likelihood of these recurrent acute UTIs. Um, so I think for me, a lot of the idea is just treating them in the acute, but then opening the door to a bigger conversation of what is the, the causal element of this? Why does this keep happening? Right. And I think when you can give someone something that makes them feel better quickly and opens that door a little bit, I think they're much more willing to trust you and say like, okay, let's go a little deeper down the rabbit hole yeah. and maybe we get you on a peptide and let's go a little deeper and maybe you're doing NAD infusions, you know, every X number of months. And like the rabbit hole is, can go deep and there's a whole new exciting world to discover that ideally would keep that patient from needing to come in for acute illness again, right. where the nature of our relationship is I'm basically there as like a coach and a friend to help maintain their health and wellness and increase their level of wellness so that they're not acutely sick again. Um, but I think you have to earn that trust by giving them interventions that are affordable, accessible, and provide immediate relief so that they trust you the next time you say, okay, let's go a little deeper and let's explore this world together. 100%. Yeah. And like that's the long winded that, answer. So no, I, I, I love it. I think, I, yeah, it's, I can tell like, because it's a very <laughs> exciting approach too. you know, like a lot of people, you go to a doctor's office, like, oh, you have like strep throat. Here's like, <laughs> like, okay, let's look at like maybe the root cause of why this is happening. Oh, you're not sleeping well. Oh, you're not doing this. And it's yeah. like trying to figure out and then like, be like, let's open these doors. You know, I think that that is so exciting because no one does it. Yeah. Uh, and so you, do you work with, I think you do work with clients remotely, right? We do. Yeah, we do. I think that's, you know, one of the things that forced innovation during COVID in medicine, yeah. the, the ability of, of practices to get comfortable doing remote medicine. So one of the things, especially with, with integrative health that we can do is we've built out um, this kind of network across the country for our ability to get diagnostics to people. So a practice like ours, uh, you may be able to find it in Los Angeles or New York, but sometimes it's hard to find that in, in places that don't have large urban areas. Right. So we want to be able to offer this to patients all across the country, wherever they are. Um, so we've built out this network of, of diagnostics and uh, we can get testing to you where you just pop it in the mail. We get your results quickly, can operate from there. If we need to get supplementation or peptides or whatever, we've built out kind of this network yeah. um, so that patients can benefit from what we have at Blue Door, even if you're not here in Los Angeles. And what's the best way for someone that is interested in that um, to get in contact with you? Yeah. So if anyone's interested, I'd love for you guys to check out our website. We have a lot of information on there. Um, if you have any questions, contact us. But our website is www.bluedoorcares.com. Um, again, lots of information about our different services. If you have any questions, give us a call. We'd, we'd love to touch base with you. Yeah, absolutely. And you also have an Instagram, right? It's like Blue, Dare, Blue Door Cares, right? At Blue Door Cares. That's it. Yeah. Okay. It's like, uh, check it out Blue, at Blue Door Cares. And uh, it'll be like a little mushroom man. And it'll say yeah. Blue Door. I saw that. That's that's really funny. <laughs> um, 
Thank you so much for hopping on. Really such a like, uh, you know, honor to, to have you on here and speak to you. So thank you so much for making your time. And hey, no, I appreciate you interviewing me. Yeah, of course. It's great. And um, yeah, again, if you guys are listening, want more information, uh, Blue Door, what's the website? Sorry, it's Blue Door. Yeah, yeah. bluedoorcares.com. And then the, the Instagram is at Blue Door Cares. Um, yes. Hit up Nate, uh, hit up his team. Like they they know their stuff. I've worked with <laughs> so many people. I've gone to Nate myself. I sent him clients already. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, and I'm just uh, really excited to keep sending people and, and working with you uh, together. And uh, well, I like what you man. This is, it's just fantastic. It's so great to see. Such a breath of fresh air. Uh, thanks so much for having me today. Yeah, of course, man.